It's all about humanity. It's all about humanity.
It's all about humanity. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Humanity Junction. My name is Heath, and this is Hanging hanging Out with Humanity. Hang Out with Humanity. I forgot the name of my own show. What, what can I tell you? It's Friday morning. I hope everybody had a fantastic week, and everyone is getting ready for hopefully what is going to be a weekend with some nice weather. I've got the model railroad live streams and regular shows popping up on the screen. On your left, if anybody does not see themselves on that list and they would like to be added, please send myself or John at Schuylkill River Valley an email. I am going to check in and see who's joining us this morning. We have Andy Ambrose is here. We have Lee from Anfield Road Layout in the Loft. Colin Wilkes, co sorry. Colin Wikes is in the house. Tim from CP368 Productions is here. Dwight Curley is here as well. Tyler from Lackawanna Rail Fan. And Tyler, I remember when I was at 400 subs as well, and I kind of can't, can't believe where I am uh, these days either. Uh, Lauren Hurwitz joining us as well. Lynn McCurdy coming in from the West Coast. Martin Searsma. In the house, Greg Mids Summer Railway and Scale checking in from Australia. We've got John at Mystic Southern Railway. Nisi J in the house. Roy Eltham is here as well. And there is John from Schuylkill River Valley, who I was talking about earlier. Shane's Trains is here as well. We've got Shays N Scale. We have Steve Childers, who is already checking in in the basement, and we'll get to him in one second. We've got Hillbilly Railroad joining us as well. Uh, one sort of business note I guess I have. Uh, I had the opportunity to get interviewed from Darren over at Model Railroad Techniques. And I will uh, let everybody know, but he does a lot of interviews with some really interesting people. Uh, Darren's from out in Australia, and he's got a... He's got a really good YouTube channel that's primarily about interviewing and getting to know different uh, model railroaders. So if you're not subscribed to Darren, check out his channel, Model Railroad Techniques. And shortly, I will uh, you'll see me on there being interviewed. 
So again, if you don't see your show, please leave us a comment and uh, or email myself or John or or whoever, and we'll uh, we'll figure it out. We'll we'll find a way to get get to you as well. Let's. Uh, oh, I see. He just turned around. The second I bring him on screen, he turns around, walks away. You can't. You know, if it's not one thing, it's something else with this guy. I tell you. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. Uh, that is that is what they say. How are you doing, sir? I'm wonderful. Fine, sunny Florida morning. Yeah, are you going to uh, get out and sit at the koi pond and watch some fish today for a little bit? I usually uh, have a few adult beverages out there on Friday afternoons. That sounds very nice. I will be going out to the park this afternoon as well, and I will probably be watching uh, Anthony Dodge's show from out in the park uh, today a little bit later just to just to try and get a little sunshine in. So what's uh what's on your what's on your plate for today well before my plate vegas odds are one to eight against on the new firmware so just just letting you know uh, i have tidied up some my corn backdrop photo backdrop arrived yesterday it's out in the garage i huh. pulled the back i pulled the back board Right. Um, I saw somewhere where on on a YouTube video how someone trimmed about an eighth of an inch off of the landscape into the sky, and then just used the blue paint uh, for their sky instead of the backdrop sky. So I have trimmed my corn, and I've made it over and bought some different paint that matches what's left of that blue line better. So that's all out in the garage uh, to be d dealt with later. Over here, you may recall there's a divide, a seam divide here. Yep. I pulled that off because I am attaching some of Nick's Train uh, Fanatics uh, flex. Okay. Oh, cool. Hold on one second. Let me make you bigger. That's... Uh... Now, did did he uh, did you buy them all as one piece, or are they separate pieces that you've attached to the divide? They're separate pieces, okay. Um, and three of them have two lights each: two here, one there, one there, one there, one there. And then this is an abandoned uh, warehouse. The area in between here is where a road comes through, and over here, same yep. thing: a road and a bridge. Um, so, but I, I've, uh, put the copper tape on yep. the back, uh, to solder my wire needs to. And while this last section is drying, cause I just, uh, adhered it this morning. Um, <coughs> I, uh, have put a terminal block in here and I got a lead down to my accessory bus work so that I have, Electrical availability for my Union Station and Chicago scene here. So that's what I'm going to be working on. The awesome. Awesome. Part, part so of those are right from uh, Nick at PGH Train Fanatic. His website yeah. is, I believe, PTF Designs. Exactly. Um, he does a live stream usually on Sundays, usually around 3 o'clock. But uh, he, he's got a pretty amazing O-scale layout, and he runs some pretty interesting trains on his layouts and his his backdrops are just great i'm actually talking to him about uh making me a backdrop for z scale which uh, he doesn't have on his site but he says he can absolutely do it he's gonna put leds in them as well so i'm looking forward to getting a little bit of his uh backdrops on my z scale layout as well and i do yeah, like i don't know you, you went through it a little quickly but i do just want to mention that copper tape idea is uh, something that I don't know that everybody knows about, but for low amperage items, such as your LEDs, instead of running wires, 
uh, I've seen a couple people now do this where they use copper tape and they just solder the leads to the copper tape. And then the copper tape is flat and you can, you know, basically get your wires through very, very narrow places using the copper tape method. No. Exactly. And it's great for right behind building flats because although the copper tape's on the opposite side as those flats, it's on the side that's, that's going to be Chicago with more flat and front buildings. Okay. So it's still needed to be flat. And the terminal block here is going to be inside one of these front buildings. So. Mm -hmm. But this is this is a uh, copper tape. It's available on the, uh, Amazon. This is one inch and then I cut it and uh, slice it down the middle. Yeah, I thought, I don't know what I bought. bought something. Um, mine's much skinnier. What did I get? Yeah, you, you can get. Yeah, mine's um, mine's quarter inch. So. The, um, and the reason I went with one inch and then cut down the middle is it gives me a little more flexibility. I, I got to work it more, but a little more flexibility. Um, and it won't heat up as much with the amperage draw. Not that the other does. I'm One thing guessing with say, the with the wider tape, you can probably get a little more amperage through it as well because there's a little bit more heat dissipation. So you definitely... Yes. Uh, Andy Ambrose did put say you could run 5 amps through it, but I would... You know, just... Yeah. just uh, <laughs> maybe test it first. <laughs> you know... <laughs> The, I will say, uh, when I worked on a lumberyard, on the underside of the base to that lumberyard is copper tape. Well, when I, mm. I did the gravel work uh, for the lumberyard, and the way I do the gravel is, is our real fine floor to beat sand, uh, mm. to whatever color you want to stain it to, uh, and then using uh, watered-down Elmer's glue wall and wet water, Okay. Well, what happened there is it got in and down and around and into that copper yeah. tape and sh shorted out my lighting system. So I had to disconnect those copper leads for now. Okay. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I, I think the yeah. copper tapes, copper tape probably great in like a locomotive or something or like short distances. Um, and, and too, like, I don't know if you do this, but you could probably cover it with Kapton tape. Or something like that too, so that it's not uh, you're not exposing the conductive side of it where you don't need it. Yeah. And I'm wondering, uh, I don't know, just some things for people to experiment with. I just thought it was an interesting thing. I actually first saw it over at uh, uh, Mark at Donegal Donegal Dad. Um, he was using it for some bumpers. That he was lighting and he was using i believe the the tape to go like up the the back of the bumper or something i forget exactly how he was doing it but he was using very narrow strips of tape to get into you know a spot that you couldn't get into with a piece of wire at all i actually picked this tip up uh i was over on one of lee lee's who's in the uh yeah uh, chat right now and so uh, road layout and law. Pick it up on one of his live streams uh, from a gentleman, Dave T. Who uh, he told me the other day was no longer yep. in the hobby, but uh, uh, that's what I picked it up from when I had mentioned oh, okay. using uh, brass rods as bus bars inside of buildings. Yeah. And yeah. He, he said something about the tape, so when I got to the lumberyard, I thought I'd give it a ch chance, and it worked well there, there until I used my wet water. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you probably have to convert to uh, when you get to the bottom of the building. You probably have to wire in some uh, actual cables. <laughs> but uh, it probably would. Uh, hey, but, well, you know, it, it's, it's not gonna be better to, for you to make the mistake. Better, you know, yeah. better that you show us what not to do than have everybody make the mistakes on their own. So, and I've always said that's what my channel's about. It's not how to. It's how how I do and how I fix what I did. Exactly. But that's the hobby. That's what I love about the hobby, the trial and error, you know, trying new things, uh, making things work. So, uh, yeah, it's great. But, uh, uh oh, Rick's in the house. 
Yeah, I saw I saw the tree has arrived. Um <laughs> So, uh, hey, Steve, Randall. you you did talk about the uh the odds on my new firmware working. Uh if people watched last week's, they will have seen me with uh this DK518 switch decoder. Uh we had a little issue that was a firmware issue. I reached out to them and it's a week later and now they've got new firmware out. So uh, very fast oh, response. I, what? I thought we were, I thought it was about your uh, streaming software. No. <laughs> no, I only do I only do those streaming ones late at night when uh, you know when nobody's watching. I this is this is all about the switch decoder. And if people don't remember, you can. I don't. Uh, let's see if you can maybe see it a little better here. You can kind of see there's a switch missing right here. So last week, uh, the the little issue with the switch decoder was that when you use the app, and we'll get into the app in a second, but when you used the app, everything worked really well. But then when I used my uh, throttle, it would send out the voltage for a much, much longer time than the app was. And... If you know anything about snap switches, if you keep the voltage applied to them for a long enough time, you melt the you melt the snap switch. So today's goal is to not destroy any more switches. So I've got my meter out again, and have I'm you gonna. Got, have you got the switch to replace the one from last week? Uh, it's on the way. It, uh, the switches come in from Japan, so y you just kind of have to wait for it. But uh, oh, I'm gonna uh, just one. Boy, you're confident. Of course, come on. <laughs> you, you don't think I? You don't think I learned things from the yeah. the first couple yeah, times absolutely. I uh, blow them up? But there, yeah, absolutely. But there's always something else, a different application. That yeah, well, we're gonna we're gonna try not to blow anything up today. So, I've got my little uh, my little lever nut connected to my DCC power coming out of my DR5000. I'm gonna plug the DigiKeys device into it. I have the meter connected on the first output of the device, and I'm gonna try and just show it again, sort of what it was doing. Uh, with without the updated firmware, and then I'll try and update the firmware. What I don't know is whether it's going to actually let me not update the firmware. So we'll we'll see how that goes. But uh, it, if I get this working, I'm gonna I'm gonna wire up the rest of the the switches, and hopefully be able to control more of the switches on this layout. And we'll see. Too late to add the order. Add what? It'd be too late to add your switch order. Oh yeah, I'm not. I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about it at all. All right, let's see who we got. We got David or Paul, depending on uh, who you, uh, who, how you want to refer to him for the day. Good morning, gentlemen. So, what's new in your world? I just got home from work. How was it? Did you have a good time? Mm, it was work. Uncle, I'll end it on that note. Yeah, I, uh, Joey, this is a fantastic item. It's $99 from Iowa Scaled Engineering, and it just works. It works with DC, it works with DCC, it works with N scale, it works with HO scale. It's, um, it's just fantastic, and uh, you know, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. So, so uh, if people don't know, uh, DES Media Productions here in chat is Dave P, who you see on screen. So, uh, you you working on anything exciting today? Uh, just deciding on what I'm doing for Jack Jack Part Two. Nice. Any uh, any thoughts? Yep. Um, well, it's 
small industry is what I'm thinking of doing. Um, kind of got a rough idea. Ordered some stuff for it, waiting for it to come in. There we shipped it. All right, so here, here's what we're playing with for people that missed it uh, last time. Um, I do have, let's go overhead and let's zoom in a little bit. So on the switch decoder, there is a green light saying I've got power. And then over here, there's a blue light saying that I'm connected via Bluetooth. And on my uh, iPhone, I've got the DigiKeys app running and I'm in the switchboard. And output 101, you can see when I hit it, it goes, uh, the, the display on the meter flashes because it's sending an instant uh, switch command to it. So I'm gonna get out of this decoder. So I'm no longer connected via Bluetooth. The light went out and I'm gonna take out my, my throttle. And what we should notice is that when uh, when I throw the switch, instead of the instant sort of on off that we saw with the app, we're gonna see the voltage actually come on and then the voltage actually go away at uh, a much longer one zero switch, switch one zero one. Oh, not, not connected. So reconnect it. There we go. Now we're connected. So switch 101 and the F button throws it. And you can see, you can literally see how long it's sending the voltage out for. So sending that much voltage to those Z scale switches that's uh, that's why I was having a problem. And Jason, I'm not I'm not breaking everything because I'm using my meter. I just wanted to demonstrate what the issue was before I updated the firmware and fixed everything. So uh, we're, we're we're gonna update the firmware next and see what happens. Oh, uh, power off. There we go. So we're gonna go back into the app. Let's see, where can people see the app? We're gonna use without an account. We're gonna log in here. Now I'm gonna go to update firmware. And the current firmware is, I don't know if you can see it. I don't know if it'll focus. Let's see, maybe it won't focus. Current firmware is 1.01 .01 and it's not focusing. You know, it's always gotta be something. Current firmware is 1.01. .01. The latest firmware is 1.03. The latest firmware uh, should be the one that solves that problem that I just demonstrated. And of course, I'm getting all kinds of people with a lot of confidence in my ability to update some firmware. Uh, <laughs> use the meter last. So I used the meter, Tim, after it burned out the switch. So this time I'm using the meter before I burn out the switch, figuring that if I do it before, I'll have uh, more luck. So we're going to select the firmware. So it comes up down there. And we click Fertig, which means done. And then I'm going to click Update Firmware, and we'll see some lights flashing. This is... Let's see. <laughs> so, so this is a digital uh, firmware update? So much confidence from everybody, but I, I, do, I do appreciate the super chat. Yeah, this is this is from DigiKeys and it updates right through the app. And uh, what I'm loving about this switch decoder though is, I mean, just so easy, it just, it recognizes the device really quickly. It shows, you know, right away what the firmware updates are. The connect, like I have uh, GoPros and you basically connect to a GoPro the same way over Bluetooth. And 
it's always a problem connecting. There's always some issue to update the firmware. Like it's always something. And this has just been like, except that there was a firmware issue, which they fixed within a week, supposedly. And we're going to test that in a second. It's just the device has been amazing so far. So uh, update firmware. Let's see how long this takes. Update process. It says down here, update process two of two. And the bar is about halfway. And the Angel Shares checking in. I saw J94 here as well. Uh, a couple other people checking in. Lynn saying, I got this. I appreciate that. And look at that. Already firmware already updated. So let's uh, get back into it. Let's open the switchboard so up. How are you going to test it? Oh. How do you test it so before you burn up a switch? Uh, same exact way I tested it before. The way I was just showing you. I'll I'll yeah, act. I'll throw the switch and I'll watch the meter and we'll see what the meter does. Now, one thing that the instructions did say to do is that for this firmware update, they recommend that you reset to default, which it looks like it does just that quickly too. The light flashes and says it did it. So we're gonna start configuration again. Um, you know, load preset on all outputs. We're doing preset zero, which is the one already selected. Uh, we're going to set device address. We're going to set the starting address to 101. And we're going to configure device. And just that quickly, we just configured this decoder as a switch decoder. And I'm going to open the switchboard now, and you can see the address numbers changed to the address that I set the device at. And now if we watch again uh, the meter, we'll be able to see when you hit the when you hit the button. It should wow, I don't even see it changing at all. I wonder. Uh, now I'm wondering if it's actually even throwing the switch, if it's happening so quickly. Hmm. Is it throwing it that quickly? Well, I see the blue light is flashing every time you click it. Yeah, so it's definitely receiving the command. Just, yeah. uh, last, so there's a little meter here on the bottom. Yep. It shows you your range. And this is a true RMS meter, uh, so it's it's reading very quickly. So uh, when you you know when you hit it, usually you'd see some kind of flash. Yeah. But let's uh let's go and check out the. Uh, I love. People already have no confidence. Come on, people. <laughs> we, we got this. We got this. <laughs> Carl's saying I've been opening and closing his garage door. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we, 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 people think it's going to self-destruct, so let's, uh, let's take this out and let's at least see what, see what the remote does. Okay, so the remote's connected, switch 101. Yeah, so when I throw this, you see the light flashing. But again, I, I'm not seeing any voltage opening or closing, which which makes me wonder: is it just opening and closing that fast, or send like it's the current that it's sending so fast, or is it just not sending the current anymore at all? <laughs> um, but whatever happens, this test has given me a lot of confidence that I'm not going to blow up a switch because it's not sending out the kind of uh, voltage that it was previously. So I have a very high confidence in my understanding of electronics that I am not going to blow anything up. So we're going to move on. <laughs> Who knows what's going to happen? But we're going to move on. So we're going to pull the screwdriver out. So now what I need to do is I'm going to try and find um, this little bigger. 
I'm going to try and find this switch here. This one, kind of the next one in line. So if I do blow it up, it's uh, it's the next uh, easiest one to replace. So let me see if I can figure that out. Uh, looking underneath here. So is your confidence waning? My confidence is not waning. I don't, you know. I can't help you with the people in the the people in the chat. Already just planning, say, can, already planning contingency over. Uh, I know, right? Uh, if you pop another one, <laughs> that's a great question. I have not seen a setting to adjust the length. I do know that the first preset is specifically for snap switches, uh, so I do. I do feel confident that should it work, it should be correct. But, you know. So el electricity is by far my best. Um, it's the thing I understand about all of this stuff the most. So of anything... Uh, this is this is something I have the most confidence in my ability to uh, to figure out the issues. Elec electricity or electronics? Because it's two different things. <laughs> uh, electronics. I mean, it's the uh, yeah, the electronics side of it. I'm not worried about it. So we are. You know what I'm gonna do? Just. So I don't short anything out. We're going to turn off the power to the decoder. Just because, you know, it's a smart thing to do. Because why not? I still can't believe the majority of you are voting against me. I mean, come on. Uh, Where is it? There is a track record to uh, acknowledge your. Uh, there is, there is. That's true. But, but I learned stuff last week, and it was you do that. You know, you don't make this. You don't. You're not making the same mistakes twice. So they're not mistakes. It's really, it's just it's learning. learning. I think that's uh, you know, I think that's a big part of this process. So, uh, we are going. I don't to... think last week was your fault. I that was. Somebody else's fault. Yeah, no, 100%. That was the, the firmware issue. So now, theoretically, um, I don't have a way of zooming in, but um, is there a way to make that easier to see? Not. Um, let's see. If that was red, no, that's not going to help. Well going to be a little hard to see but let's uh let's just get into it go to the switchboard uh changes the address so now theoretically when i open and close this this switch right here is going to move so do you see it do you hear it we're watching yeah i see it move here as long as we don't idea. smell it yeah, let's let's try this. There we go. It moves. So it moves, and and we know from our testing with the meter that it was not sending out excessive amounts of uh, voltage, and you can you know you can feel it. It's not hot at all, so it's just sending out that instantaneous switch that uh that we want it to send out mm -hmm. so i'm gonna get out of this so i'm i'm releasing this from this and now we're gonna go back to uh what we used last time that uh blew up the switch or it didn't blew up the switch but it but it called uh crispy critter did yeah yeah I've got at least one person on my side. Well, 
until I blow something else up. So, <laughs> yeah, hey, Timber, sir. No, Roy's not my father. <laughs> Talk about your dad. Oh well, I don't. I don't see my dad in here sh throwing any confidence out there either. Uh, Real Artist says, uh, voting for you, Heath, but then I always go for the underdog. <laughs> oh, Nisi says uh, she believes in Drew Dudes as well. Uh, we have confidence in your abilities to sort out the issues, but fear the cost of the components along that route. Yes, that is that is true. That is true. I uh, I even said that to Nisi. We were on a live live stream last night, and I, I said to Nisi that the... The goal of troubleshooting is to minimize your cost of, uh, you know, the destructive items. So we're going to go and... Uh, so we're bringing up Switch 101 again. And the F is going to... Oh, that did not sound good. Uh-oh. It's... Uh, it's much faster, but it's doing this weird, like, ticking thing. So it's working. It's gonna blow. But it's like it's it's throwing out... Um, what it seems to be doing is throwing out multiple pulses. Uh, so, like, with the app, it just switched, and it was done. Cut the blue wire. Got the blue with wire. The, yeah. With the throttle, it seems to throw <laughs> out, uh, like, it, it's as if it's sending the, the information multiple times, but very quickly. That's interesting. I don't know why they're doing that. So, here's one thing I want to try, though. So, it, it seems to be working. It does not seem to be burning anything up. I always like that, that conditional uh, modifier there. It doesn't seem. <laughs> well. Oh, no, it melted it. No, wait. No, it didn't. Hold on. <laughs> no, yes. No, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Yes it doesn't no. seem to be throwing the switch anymore. Well, that's not there a good thing. There it goes. Thing. Well, there it went. Threw it that time. Yeah, see, now it's not throwing it, though. It's just... Uh... So, I think... That's, uh... I think it's still, I think there might still be an issue. Uh, let's see, open switchboard. Sure you don't want to update that order before it gets to the boat? <laughs> well, you, it, on eBay, you can't update anything. <laughs> well, yeah, it looks like I may need a new switch again. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have, when I heard it doing the tick, 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 I probably shouldn't have kept running it on the throttle. I probably should have just gone back to the app. But, because uh, it, it'll throw in this direction, but it's not throwing back in the other, oh, well, of course, and now, of course, it does it. So. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes now it's not throwing in in that other this direction, but it, it's always throwing in this direction. But is the, is the switch itself melted? Is there any melt of plastic? I don't smell anything this time. Um, so what it I mean, what it is inside is it's it's basically a uh, a magnet, an electromagnet inside. And you're adjusting the polarity of the electromagnet, and there's two magnets on top that then it that then it uh, that then it flips back and forth. At DV Tech, that that lasted 46 minutes. <laughs> but see, I don't. I, I mean, how else do you learn this stuff? Like you know, I mean, there's 
there's no other way to learn this unless you just kind of unless you kind of work it out. Is this a digikey? Is this a digikey's issue or is it an Iowa Electronics issue? Uh, it it would be uh, digikeys or digitracks uh, would be the would be the two manufacturers that um, well or yeah. or it could be the digikeys command station because I'm using a digikeys DR five thousand so technically when I'm throwing the switch on my digitrax throttle it's telling the DR five thousand to switch the switch, which it's looking like, I think it's probably the DR5000 that's actually sending the DCC command to the switch decoder. Yeah, there's gotta be something in between uh, to regulate that command. Well, it's the, D the DR5000 sending the command to the switch decoder. The DR5000 is the brains of the operation. I understand. And it's, it's determining what polarity it needs to go. Okay. Um, Correct. Yeah. So, so, um, so there, there's three outputs here. There's, you know, three wires out. So all the switch decoder is basically doing is it's throwing the polarity either to the, you know, to the the one side or the two side, the closed or the throw side, and then this little yeah, that's the piece of device here. But that's the piece. Of, that's the piece of equipment that has to be momentary. Okay. If you go back to the old days. Correct. Analog, Correct. Analog, this analog, this, this okay, is the piece. An, 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 let's this is the piece that has the firmware in it. This is the piece that has the firmware in it that when it hears the command from the DR5000, it then decides what to do. And with the app, it's doing something once and momentary. And with the throttle, it's sending the command out multiple times. So it's the firmware in the decoder that's doing two different operations depending on whether it's getting the command from the the uh, the DR5000 or whether it's getting the command from the app. The app is connected via yeah. Bluetooth, so it's not going through the DR5000. So, so the switch is now working again, which I don't know why, but at least it... it uh, switch is now definitely working again. Uh... We learn by watching you, then we know eventually what not to do. Saves us a fortune in burnt out motors. Yeah. Uh, might be that the throttle sends multiple pulses to make sure the switch turns. Yeah, I mean, I am definitely going to, uh, you know. I, and how much have you used a switch prior to this hooking an electronic? I mean, never. This is the brand new layout. It could just be a little oxidation that's caused to stick. No, you you can literally you can you can hear the electromagnet uh, activating uh, four times in a row with the throttle, and you only hear the electromagnet activate once with the app. So oh, it's still wrong. definitely doing two different things depending on. Uh, which device I'm using. Yeah, that's key bit of information you need to let digit keys know. Yeah, so. But, you know, all that said, oh, so here, I want to try one other thing. So we're going to try something else. The other thing that I want to try, just because I like experimenting, and it's fun, and that's what I like about the hobby, is... I am going to hook up one of these nine volt little jobbers to the power port. And I'm going to see if I can use uh, the device says it's rated for 12 to 24 volts. So I don't know if the nine volts will be enough to actually power the device. Uh, but I want to see if 
Uh, because Z scale usually is rated up to 10 volts. Um, seems it's not a firm where to go now. I think he's making a joke. I'm not sure. Yeah, and this is, I don't know DCC enough to know whether it's the command station that sends the multiple pulses to throw the switch or whether it's the throttle that throws multiple pulses to the command station. But luckily, luckily there are people at the other end of, you know what, I can actually send this email right now, uh, or I could actually send out, uh, send out a thing right now while we're on the stream, and maybe we'll get a response back while we're on the stream. Um, let's... So give me one second. Let's try this. Uh, good news and bad news. The good news is that I did not fry another switch. The bad news is that with the throttle, With the let's let's get specific with the Digitrax throttle connected to the DR five thousand via a UR ninety three. When I throw the switch on the throttle instead of throwing the which once it sends out multiple pulses, these multiple pulses are um, causing issues with the switch. So why? Uh, why is the DK people are like this is not interesting watching you write an email? <laughs> why is the DK the GA hundred throwing a single pulse to the switch when using the app, but throwing multiple pulses to the switch? when using a throttle. Uh, I already lost one switch. Trying watching, waiting. not to waiting, damage another. Thanks. <laughs> All right, so let's see, maybe I'll, maybe I'll get a response to this while we're, uh, while we're on the stream and uh, this this could be could be live live troubleshooting. Uh, would you be able to sniff the DCC bus since you only have a switch connected? Um, theoretically, if I knew more about the software program, I probably could. Um, I probably could figure it out. Uh, I don't. I don't know about DCC nearly well enough uh, to do that. Um, yeah, so here, Anybody? so here's the interesting part, right? Is is this DK518 is from DigiKeys? Iron Planet Hobbies is the DigiKeys um, distributor for the U.S. and for Canada, and uh, they're very involved in the development of these products. So I do have a pretty direct line. Uh, you know, to to talk to the people that I need to talk to to get things fixed. Uh, I guess maybe I, you know, I, I guess I look at it this way, right? Maybe I should probably be testing these things uh, offline and not in front of everybody because they are a sponsor of the show and this doesn't put them in the best light that their product uh, is having issues. That said, 
this is a production release and you know i i can only imagine that there are people out there that are going to have the same issue i'm going to have now the other side of it is i'm trying to use this with roku han z scale switches which are significantly smaller than n scale switches and probably don't have nearly the um the beefiest switch motor in them so there's also a chance that i'm just using this device with a switch that it's not designed to be used for and that's why i'm experiencing problems they likely tested it with a kato unitrack switch and there probably was no issue i'm using it with a switch that it's not designed to be used for so you know there's well, you don't uh, know it's not it's not on the list right like if you go to the website there's mm. a, an approved list of switches uh that it says that it works with we believe in yeah. theory that it should work with this roku han switch because it's the same snap mechanism in the other switches, but you know, different voltages. Uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure. I think the Roku Hans are ten, and the Kados are are uh, twelve. So that's that's why I'm going to drop this in right now, and I'm going to run this off of. A, I'm going to see if I can run it off a nine volt battery. So while we could be blaming DigiKeys, there's also a very good chance that it's a hundred percent operator error. Uh, I'm into the last part. Yeah. You want the Vegas so, odds? Yeah. <laughs> so I am sending 13 volts into a switch expecting 10 volts at a at a theoretical microscopic microscopic uh, uh, theoretically only like a single sine wave to it so it's uh, I uh, I do not see any way that I can adjust it but I'm sure that from the factory uh, they can adjust it uh, maybe they should come on live with you, Heath, and see why in your world. Yeah, so uh, only a chance. Yeah. Um, it's uh, So before I did this, I talked to Ryan at Iron Planet Hobbies. I told him what I was trying to do. Um, he actually, you know, he's supporting my channel 100% in that he sent me these items to do this. So, I, you know, I can't really blame them at all for any of this. Uh, oh, you know, you're the beta test. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm trying something that may or may not work because, well, I'll be honest. If I had an N scale layout set up, I'd be doing this with an N scale layout, not with a Z scale layout, but you know. Unfortunately, I am limited to what I have scale, available. And the end scale switches may be fully compatible and that not not even an issue. Right. Yes. And that is very likely what they tested it with uh, was, you know, a beefier, a beefier switch. I'm not worried. I'm not worried about the voltage difference. What I'm worried about is the amperage difference. Uh, yeah. That if this is sending out too much amperage, that that's what's going to cause the issue. Uh, and it's not necessarily the amperage difference, it's the length of time. Correct. Yeah. Or, or a functional relationship. Correct. So now I'm going to. Oh, okay. So look at that. I am now getting power. Uh, so the DCC system is uh, not sending anything out. I'm now getting power from this nine volt battery 
And we're going to see if I go into the app, if it, sh there you go, devices online. And I am going to open the switchboard and it's identifying it. And yeah, look at that. That's kind of cool. Oh, we're already on the side that's moved. Was I, was I on the right camera? Yeah, I was on that camera. Okay, yeah, now I'm on this camera. Okay, so, um, well, come on. Yeah, so the switch definitely throws better in that direction now than the other direction, so I think I definitely messed the switch up a little bit. Uh, so, you, you have to manually flip it in that direction, but then it, uh, it automatically flips back the other way. Um. I may try opening the switch up and just uh, cleaning off the magnet a little bit, because uh, there's there's uh, the way it works is there's there's two magnets, and then the one uh, the one electromagnet bounces back and forth between the other two magnets, so um, you don't send amps, you pull amps. Yeah, so theoretically, this is not pulling. Theoretically, this shouldn't be uh, over pulling it. And I don't, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think this single pulse that this is pulling. I, I think the issue is the single pulses versus the multiple pulses, though. I don't think it's an issue of voltage and amps. It's my somewhat uneducated but um opinion on it i wish it would throw back in the other direction that kind of makes me sad but you know what are you gonna do well so what i think i'm gonna do for now because i can is i'm gonna get this all set up using just this nine volt battery and i'm gonna disconnect the dcc from this completely and i'm gonna have this just be a just be a you know just powered off of a nine volt battery because why the heck not um are you asking if i am uh the the switch is a single pole uh unit uh, I'm pretty sure because it only has the two wires. It doesn't have three wires. It just has uh, just has a thing. Uh, solenoids will pull more amps when driven to a higher voltage. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it could 100% be my fault. I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't put it past it. Uh, I was pretty confident though in that the you know j just the short pulse wasn't. Uh, uh, that the length of the pulse wasn't going to cause an issue, but the multiple pulses is what did cause the issue. So let me see. Oh, I need to cancel that. Mr. Train Freak, what's happening, sir? What is going on? I am blowing things up. That is what is going on. Okay, tell me something new. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, what I'm going to do is... I don't think today's get considered blowing up. Y'all. No, I mean, I'm, I'm learning. I'm learning a lot. It's, uh, you know, I'm learning at 50 bucks a pop, right? I mean, that's unfortunately the, the reality of it. Uh, so, the real question is, is, has anybody else sent you a super chat or super sticker since Marty started your new decoder fund? Uh, yes, uh, Roy. Roy did as well. So, Mar Way to go, Roy. Mar Marty and Roy have been uh, have been helping me uh, blow things up. That's so, awesome. Yes, I agree. So, what I want to do is I'm going to wire these up. Because why not? I've already blown things up. Why not keep going? As well. Yeah, so I, 
with the nine volt battery, I know I'm not sending too much voltage. Uh, and with the app, I know I'm only sending a single pulse. So I think we're, uh, I think we're in good shape now. I uh, didn't know that Roy Alpham. So amps pull is higher at higher voltage. I th technically shouldn't amps volt amps be amps should be lower at higher voltage. Because the the device has the same amount of wattage, and if you raise the volts, you lower the amps, which is uh, whatever that I equals PV. What do you think, Lee? So uh, if. <laughs> Uh, I'm just gonna have a whole. Uh, I'm just gonna have a whole blow things up fund. By the time I'm done, that's pretty awesome. Uh, so Roy says uh, normally yes, but with a coil load, it's different. Okay, see, so that that part I did not know that it's different with a coil load. Uh, so here, here's the thought. So the outer rail is going to be 1A. The inner rail will be 1B. We'll make this 2B. Let's get this out of the way. And the other one's 2B determined? <laughs> no, the other one's 2A. <laughs> Smart ass. <laughs> Someone's got to be. Okay, there we go. 2B, so this is going to be 2A, and then this will be 3, and this will be 4. So I have four of these guys, uh, four of these little uh, adapter guys, and I'm going to wire them up. Basically, these two switches will be in, you know, one. These two switches will be in another. This switch will be in one, and then this switch will be in one. So that's the plan. Uh, let's see. Uh, solenoids and motors will pour up more amps when driven at higher voltages. Hmm. Yeah. See, this is this is the formula I was using. Um, to arrive, to be or to not to be. Well, hey, if I wasn't here, we wouldn't have learned anything today, right? So there's that. Um, okay, so. I mean, I've learned something. You, you learn not to, uh, not to do what I'm doing? Pretty much. Yep. But you That's know, I, I mean, when it comes to decals and putting Walters kits together, yeah. don't learn from me. But see, and we were talking about this the other night. I'm actually a big fan of these kind of videos where, like, just things go wrong because people are just trying things. Because, I mean, you know, someone's got to do it. Right. Why not me? So this is going to be number one, and uh, let me do this. There we go. That's a little better. All right, so this is going to be number one. Uh, get rid of that piece of tape. And let's make a two. So uh, how's your projects uh, going, uh, other people here? Or are you just here to watch me blow things up? <clears throat> I'm on lunch watching you blow things up. Yeah. I'm drawing watching you blow things up. Uh, you're a fan of them because that's all your videos. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Uh. Yeah, I, I'm going to open this one up. I have a feeling it's going to be something simple, but uh, we'll we'll find out. So yeah, no no response yet. Uh, building a Chinese laundry is going well. Daniel, are you building like a 
a full size Chinese laundry or a model Chinese laundry? That's the real question. Man, I was really confident I was not going to blow up another switch. I did not see that multiple pulse thing coming. I need an oscilloscope. That's what I need. He's doing a model. Old West. End scale. Oh, cool. Nice. I didn't know they had a Chinese model or Chinese laundries uh, places in the Old West. Okay, so we're going to disconnect this. Um, I guess what I need to figure out, though, what I don't know the answer to. So what do people think when, um, when it's green, would that mean that it's straight? And when it's red, would that mean it's it's turned? Thrown, yeah. Uh, typically, like, hand-thrown signals out on the real main lines will have a green sign pointed towards what we call the throat of the switch. And that's to let the engineer and the conductor from a distance know that that switch is aligned for straight. And then once they turn it into a diverging state, the sign actually rotates and then you see red and that's to let them know that that switch is turned for the diverging track. So what that means in my case is that the white wire needs to be, if the, if the threes are on, if the three, um, whatever you want to call it, three connections is on the right and the two is on the left. The white wire needs to be to the to the downside, and that would then have this be the correct way. Run the correct way. No, oh, there you go. Not all changes. There you go. Yeah, I need a silly scope. That's what I definitely need. Uh, City in Centralia, Washington, wondering if I should go be on Virtual Rail Fan. And, yeah, go for it. Uh, yeah, green is normal path. Red should be turn off path. Yeah, so. Uh, Steve 87th, if you really want to be on Virtual Rail Fan, you need to go with like a sign that says, I love Virtual Rail Fan or I love VF. So that way they will put you on their grab bag video. Oh, is that what they do? I've, I've seen it happen. I don't, I don't watch their channel a lot. All it is is live cams. Yeah, I, I see some people that are on their streams for hours. My hobby shop, Gold Coast, uh, model training center. Has it on their TV constantly. People, a lot of people <laughs> love it. I don't think I sit there and watch it, all right? But I'd have it in the background where I could look up at it every now and then. Yeah, I usually have it on another link set to the. Um, Arizona, Flagstaff. Mm. And when I, usually when I, you usually hear the, the gate coming down when the trains come, so I usually switch it. Yeah, I know the, uh, there's a couple of them. I think it's LaGrange. I think LaGrange or something like that is one, and there's like hundreds of people all day watching that one. Same with the Santa Fe Junction. Cordell, Georgia. Cordell, Georgia. Hello, hi. Hello, he. Uh, oh. Hello. How is life going in your world? 
Well, it was very busy today and yesterday. Move, moving in office. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, that sounds fun. Where are you moving to? Well, we actually um, removed the, our office. Uh, we sold everything what's inside the office, and everybody's going to work from home. Oh, interesting. There you go. So it was an office for 40 employees. I'm sure that's going to save the company a lot of money. Yes, it will. Oh, he's I'm heading out. Hi, right, Dave P. Thanks for coming. Yep. Talk to you later. Take Thank care. You, all. Bye, Dave. Bye, Dave. Jason, I see you suck in while I was on the phone. Do what? Oh, yeah. I'm sneaky like that. Jason heard I was blowing stuff up and figured uh, it was a good time to come by and see what I was breaking. You know, Heath, I oh, gotta I give you some. I would recommend to use a sniffer. I don't. I mean, all I have is um, when you when you say a sniffer, what what do you, what does that mean to you, a sniffer? Well, you can use an Arduino uh, to sniff the DCC bus to see what's happening. Ah, okay. There are many many projects who uh, who use an Arduino to sniff the DCC bus to see if your um, uh, throttle uh, sends multiple pulses to uh, the control station and on the bus. Now, how how would it know the difference between whether it's the throttle sending the pulses or the DR five thousand the control station sending the pulses? Well, you sniff the DCC bus. It's no, I get that. Because the but, DCC so, bus. But the DCC bus is only reading the DCC bus. It's not reading what the. It's not reading the information from the throttle to the DR five thousand. So it could be that the throttle is saying command, 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 or it could be that the throttle is saying command. And then the command station is saying command, command, command. So I'm trying to figure out that whether it's the throttle giving multiple commands or the control station giving multiple commands that's creating my problem. And I don't know how to get in between those two devices to determine. Yeah, see, and this is what I think too is what I, I think what Roy is saying is correct, is the commands, the throttle just tells the command station to send the command. But so is the throttle telling the command station to send the command four times? Or is the throttle telling the command station to send, is the throttle sending one command and the command station is sending the four pulses? Does that make sense? Yeah. Am I, am I asking Good that question. question I'm not that that into DCC. Yeah. You would think the throttle would only send the information to the command station one time. Well, so uh, here's the thing, though. If if you're writing a wireless protocol and you want it to be reliable. A lot of times what you will do is you will have the device sending the command to send the command multiple times within a set period of time. Right. And then you tell the receiving device, if you receive the same command four times in a row within this period of time, ignore the other commands. Right. It's, it's the same way with, you know, technology like in my field. We right. call it the three-way handshake. Um, it's a sin, sin, or sin, act, and then sin, act, which is sync, acknowledge, and then sync, acknowledged, yep. which is basically saying, hey, I'm sending the command, and then once, like the command station acknowledges, it sends a signal back saying, hey, I acknowledge, and then the sin, act will say, okay, ignore all my other commands. Mm. 
But with DCC, it's not two-way communication, which is why they're trying to go to LCC. Right. A big reason for LCC is that it would know that the switch received the command and stopped sending the command multiple times. But DCC doesn't know that. Right. So I it's it's an interesting uh So I think the story is I mean this thing on Bluetooth is fantastic. I think unfortunately it's just don't use a throttle. I think that's what they're trying to tell me is stop stop trying to use a throttle. Uh so let's see. Let's see now. So theoretically theoretically now if I throw this so now they're straight nope nope so these two switches should be moving and neither switch is moving yeah you definitely got an issue well you know what it kind of makes me wonder though I'm wondering if 9 volts isn't enough to throw the switch. Maybe let the battery let can't alone throw the too. switch. You know, since you got both of those wired in tandem, you know, that's two switches it's trying to throw. Right. Don't you have a DCC a D, DDC converter which you can turn up the voltage a bit? I wish I had a variable uh I do not have a variable uh, DC device, so it's uh... no just between the battery and the uh, um, and and the, and and the switch machine. Yeah, I'm saying I don't I don't have anything to adjust that. Unfortunately, it is unfortunately something that is not in my bag of tricks. So let's so let's see if I take so I'm taking one of the switches out. So this may be another learning opportunity. So, all right, so now there's only one switch connected. I don't know which of these two it is, but it's one of those two. It's this one. Yeah, so now this isn't You're this isn't cheating. With this setup, it's not throwing the switch at all now. But I see I can Oh, that well now it's throwing the switch. Nope. Did it throw both of them? No, no, I I disconnected the second one. So there's oh. only one uh there's only one connected right now. Did you measure the battery? What voltage right, so, it has? So here's what's funny. Now it's working. But yeah, I, I don't, don't know. I don't think you have enough voltage to throw both of them simultaneously. Which could be true. Well, and now it's not working again. So maybe the lesson in this all is that even though these switches seem very similar to um, maybe these switches seem very similar to the Kato switches, but maybe they're different enough that they just won't work. So um, we can do this uh, here. We can remove that battery. Uh, here's a here's a new battery still in the. Oh, I just noticed my uh, my little trolley in the background is having a little bit of a struggle.
Can't get the plastic off the battery. Like, like cut through the cut through the battery. All right, so new battery. Okay, so let's go back. Um, it's okay, so it's back online. Open switchboard. Uh, let's go back to side, and it should be this guy. Yeah, I saw something move. Yeah, so now it's moving. So yeah, maybe it's just that the nine volt battery just doesn't have enough uh, oomph, as uh, Roy's saying. Uh, a DC breakup, but I know I just need to get one. Um, I I don't have adjustable ones. I have DC breakout boards where it'll tell me what the voltage is. I just haven't gotten an adjustable one yet. So. I'm curious. Let's see, now that I got the new battery, let's try hooking up the two switches and see if it'll work with two switches. Because maybe I just need a 10 volt, I just need a 10 volt DC, uh, DC power supply for this. Or I wonder if I could put a DC regulator between the DCC signal and the power. And dial the power down from probably the 12 volts that's coming in here to 10 volts on this side. No. Seems like there's a couple options. A couple options to blow things up. Get a 12 volt down step to 10. I think I've got one somewhere. Yeah, no, I definitely can, but I guess what I'm wondering though is could I use that on DCC signal or not? I think you can use a regular buck converter for that. Yeah. Well, see, and this is what Roy said DCC is not DC, which is correct. DCC is a square wave. You know where DC is is a straight wave, so I don't, I don't know. I'm gonna assume that this decoder has the filtering in it to change the DCC to DC, but would a buck converter uh, correctly adjust it? I don't know the answer, which. My thought is no, but I don't really know. Okay, so now, now theoretically, see you later, Kieran. Come by any time where we blow stuff up on a regular basis. Bye, Kieran. No, no response yet. I hope people like when I blow stuff up at least. I hope I hope people will come back to watch me blow stuff up at least. Let's see how many people are here waiting for something else to blow up. There's, looks like there's 25 people here. 25 people here watching me blow stuff up. All right, so open switchboard. If my lights light, or blow up. All right, so let's let's move uh, let's move this a little bit so you can see both those switches. And so we're trying to throw these two together. We have lights. Wait, what's lights happening? Work. Yeah, so so they're both sort of. They're both sort of thinking about switching, but they're both not uh, switching. So, 
if I keep blowing up the expensive switches, people will come back. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Jason, I'm, I'm sending you a package with four packages on the inside. Okay. For dirt. And one oh. for months. So, yeah, you'll have one for May, June, July, and August. All right. What are you guys talking about? I'm very confused. He is uh, fixing a TFJ to hook up. Oh, okay. So, um, so as long as I can still control the switches uh, by hand, I'm kind of okay with this whole experimenting thing. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to reconnect these. No, it wasn't these wires. It was different wires, wasn't it? No, these two wires. I'm going to reconnect these wires so that I can use the higher voltage again and see if I can throw these two switches at the same time because, you know, whatever at this point. And then it'll be time for me to wrap up the stream. Hmm. Anyone got anything exciting going on they want to talk about while I'm... Uh, Doing my last uh, blowing up experiment. I got a new toy yesterday. Oh, what'd you get? Um, I did a live stream on it, like a little pop-up live mail call with it. Um, did I you? will warn you after watching the replay, the uh, video quality is horrible. You use StreamYard? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, StreamYard's, uh, the video quality's not good. Well, and I did it through my mobile phone. So, that way I could, you know, move my camera angles around and stuff. Um, but I got my, uh, cab forward. Oh, really? Yes, if I, it came in yesterday. I saw somebody in the comments talking about a cab forward. I yeah, that was what I heard earlier. He was asking if I was having cab forward uh, dreams last night because I didn't get to play with it much. Um, one thing I did learn is as soon as you're done with it, if you use the smoke unit, you cannot put it away right away because the uh, end of that bowler was kind of warm. Interesting. But I did find a small dip switch on the underneath side of the bowler. Where you can turn the uh, smoke unit on and off. So you just have to remember to turn it off early enough. But but you have a layout. You can leave. You could leave it on your layout. Well, and see, I made that announcement that last night too. Do what? Do what, Steve? Does it have a decoder in it? Uh, it's a Broadway Limited with Paragon Two. Decoder. Yeah. Um, it's it's. Yeah, it's a BLI, but it's got Paragon 2 in it. Oh, that's the locomotive you're talking about with uh, Paragon 2. Yeah. Okay, so uh, if everyone's ready to see the smoke again, let's uh, let's do this again. Uh, now, do we get uh, sparkles and fireworks to go with the smoke? Turning the device on. We've got power. So now I've got a Got to connect the app. App's connected. We're going to the switchboard. Oh, that's interesting. The address is completely wrong. What? Somebody got marshmallows. <laughs> no more marshmallows. Load presets on all outputs. Set device address. It says it's 101. Configure device. And go back to the switchboard. And now it says 101. Okay, so let's switch cameras. So let's see now with the higher voltage if it'll throw the two switches on the one output. So that is what it is. It's the... Uh, all right, so are they both straight, or are they both diverging, or do you have one off? I can't tell. So it's red, so right. they're both uh, diverging. Okay, so and you got 
when I switch it to green, they're both straight. Okay. You got it done, right? Congratulations. Come on. Is there any reason to ever doubt that I would do something right? I mean, have I given have I given any examples that would make you think that I, that something wasn't working? Uh, the last turnout. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Don't use the throttle, <laughs> otherwise you blow two up. Yeah. Yeah. No. 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 I'm. I'm definitely not going to use the throttle. Uh, I. I'm probably going to let somebody else be the guinea pig with the throttle from now on. And uh, <laughs> Steve, there, there is every reason to doubt. Yeah. Um, so. See, now, of course, I really want to hook up this other guy and see if if it'll work now that it's got gotten a little time to uh, to relax. I don't know why, but I feel like it just it, it was just a little stressed out and it just needed a little relaxation. And it, you know, maybe if I just gave it a little bit of time on its own without everybody watching it, that maybe it would. Uh, Maybe it would come back and start working again. No? Is that not the way it works? No. I don't know. Yeah, so Andy, I'm I'm uh I'm reaching out to uh to Ryan to ask Ryan what's going on. Although I do like this idea, uh this sniffer that you're talking about. Do you know who makes one? Is it like a pie sprog thing? Hi, that question's for you, by the way. Oh, you you can download the code for uh, sniffing the DCC bus. It's on the uh, uh, it's on the forum. Okay, and then by, and uh, just load just it on an Arduino. Just the code to the Arduino, and then hook. Uh, you need to make a small circuit uh, to sniff the bus. And then you can yep. hook it up to the DCC bus. I may have to try that if I'm gonna keep uh, I'm gonna keep blowing things up. I may have to try that. I think that might. Uh... So the Iowa engine engineering board works. Correct. The Iowa engineering board is just for the trolley. Separate thing. Oh, so that's a Okay, it doesn't have anything to do with your switch thing. No, this, uh, my whole DCC system is all just the digikeys and uh, with the Digitrax throttles. I th yeah. I thought there were some ironing components. No, sorry, two separate things. All right, no, guys, no, 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 I got no. go. I was I gotta wrong. Go. So, I will see y'all next time. Come back anytime, Jason. I'm sure there'll be more smoke. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> All right. Take care. Bye. See you later. All right. I guess part of what I like about doing this live, too, is that, um, you know, when I do have problems, there are people to tell me what I'm doing wrong and find solutions, which, you know, ultimately my goal is to find solutions. I mean, it, it's a bummer to blow things up, but still. Uh, so I need a different screwdriver now. These are really small. So here's the screwdriver for this. Uh, let's see. Uh, Tim says yet uh, we haven't had a train yet today. It makes me wonder if another rail train is distributing more rail. That's a good question. Uh, couldn't you train your dog to sniff the track? I'm sure he could tell you if it's burning or not. Yeah, my dog is probably the laziest train inspector ever, and I'm not sure just how useful. Uh, my dog's actually a she, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure how useful 
she would actually be. So one thing I'm wondering as well is I started having problems with this other switch over here when I switched the 9 volt battery. So maybe it just wasn't getting enough voltage. Well, I should say, I started to have trouble when I used the throttle. Then I switched to the 9 volt battery. And then it would only switch in one direction. Which is what we then saw this other switch doing. Which I think then now we're kind of yeah, back here. to... Uh, I think we're back. I think you got tougher issues there. Yeah, I, I think I had uh, combined uh, combined problems. See, James from Boulder Creek Yard. I've burned so many inputs on Arduino learning how to get it to sense turnout directions. Never lets the smoke out though, so it's not as fun. Yeah, but I'm not the only one that burns things up. You know, you got to burn up a couple things. Okay, so green is straight. Red is diverging, and yeah, so so this turnout works fine with the higher voltage. Which I guess, though, does lend the question of, is the higher voltage okay for these switches in the long run, or not? Question for the oh, switch maker. And now it's not, uh, now of course it's not flipping. It's not flipping back. So these are really consistent. This one still seems to be having uh, an identity. I crisis. think you burned one direction. Yeah, that's probably what it is. Um, yeah, so I'm wondering if I go inside, I might be able to uh, clean off the contact on that one side, and maybe it'll uh, maybe it'll be happier. I should have just ordered this set of turnouts because I knew I'd be blowing up another one, right? I mean, that's you know that was kind of the <laughs> didn't I say that, that? that was. It was kind of inevitable, wasn't it? I mean, that's, you know, that's kind of the... Uh, I don't know, though. Some, somehow, James, so if people don't know, uh, James is one of the people that developed the camera car that they use over at Silicon Valley Lines. Or, you know, not... Uh, I don't know the, the whole story, but I don't, I don't think it was solely his design, but, like, he, you know, he had a big part of it. So... James does know what he's doing. Uh, so there's there's part of me as somebody who has no idea what they're actually doing and just sort of trying things. Uh, kind of makes me feel better to, to know that I'm not the only one that blows things up. Okay, so I'll stick this in there. But Andy, that's no fun. What? It's no fun. Andy said if your instructions that came with to tell you which you already know. I I looked all over. I looked all over to try and find some instructions on these switches to get more details on the operation of them. And I couldn't find anything at all. Um, so, yeah, no more blue smoke. Uh, things are kind of working with the app, but definitely not with the throttle. And, yeah, I mean, you know what they say. You got to crack a few eggs to make an omelet, right? Mm-hmm. Well, somebody else... Uh... And, the eggs to, to make your, your omelet for it. Well, you know, I'm I'm making the eggs. That's all I gotta say. Or at least I'm trying to make the eggs. <laughs> Debatable how successful. On, on a brighter I am. note, Keith. Brighter note. Yes. My light work. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Uh, 
who supplies the the switches are from Roku Han. Uh, which is out of Japan, and you buy them right from Japan, and um, good luck. Yeah, no instructions in English. Uh, I, for one, enjoy that you show the trials and tribulations that you figure things out. Yeah, I enjoy it as well. I mean, I hate when it costs me money, though, but, you know, I mean, that's okay. It's, you know, I, I probably will not replace this switch uh just because it does still throw manually this other one literally melted to the point where it just wouldn't work so that one had to be replaced uh, but you know i mean do i really need uh do i really need remote operating switches on a z scale layout that you know fits on a desk no you know this is just fun uh, I've only ever fried Andy one decoder. Brad. Wow, Andy. Yeah, but Andy reads instructions and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, uh, Jerry, this is Zscale. And I appreciate that you've logged in as your woodworking channel, Jerry. Um, but yes, this is Zscale. So I'm going to get this, this number three. What I'm trying to do right now is get this number three turnout uh, wired in. Because I don't know now that now that something's working, I want to get it working. Kind of a bummer that I, I don't really get why it works with the app. Like, why would the firmware be different between the app and the? Um, I don't get that. I would say digit. As um, uh, compliant with Digitrack, I think. Yeah. Um, and Roy, yes. Oh, I just. Oh wait, this goes here. Um, Roy, I do really appreciate it. I do. You know, there are a lot of people that support the channel, um, and it is. Uh, it, I cannot thank people enough uh, for that support. Um, I do have Patreon, and I do have, uh, you know, a good support, good group of people supporting me there. I also have a great group of people supporting me on uh, YouTube. Uh, the join button right under the video, uh, you can join as a YouTube member. And then, uh, you know, people do give individual contributions as well uh, through Super Chats and Super Stickers. And I, I do really appreciate that. That definitely helps a lot. And I guess it's just kind of, you know, this thing of, uh, you know, do, do, do I want to spend the money on replacing things that I break? <laughs> or do I want to spend the money on uh, <laughs> new things? But, uh, yeah, you know, it's all, it's, a, it's all part of the game, right? I mean, it's all, uh, all a part of doing business, right? I'm actually impressed. Like people that don't ever break anything, you know. I don't know. I'm uh, uh with uh, if people have people caught some of my uh late. What, Steve? I said people breaks are boring. <laughs> yeah. Um. If people are watching my my Wednesday night pop up streams, or I think one was maybe Tuesday night, the the ones where I'm I'm trying new setups with my uh, with my OBS setup and trying new things, you know I'm I'm talking to the developer, and he even says he's like you know that's uh, you know when I developed it, I never had any intention of somebody using it like that. Um, but that kind of doesn't stop me, you know, I mean, just because it was designed for one thing doesn't mean you can't, you know, use it for other things as well. I keep, I keep checking my email to see if I, if I got a response yet, but I haven't gotten a, I haven't gotten a response yet.
so interesting that it's sending out four pulses, but there was no way to see that on the meter. And I'm just thinking for troubleshooting in the in the future, how could have I what could have I done different in my testing to catch that problem? Not well, much. And I guess here's the other question, right? So I didn't damage this turnout, right? It works now that I have more power going to it. So with that said, is it okay that the throttle is sending four pulses to it? Like, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if um, maybe the throttle... Got O'Connor with a super chat. Always enjoys the streams. Here's to letting more smoke out. I, I appreciate that. Um, so, Jerry, he here's what I'm doing. Uh, this box right here, the DK518, is my stationary decoder. It can run... Uh, it has eight separate switch outlets outputs. Uh, according to the manufacturer, you can put more than one switch on a single output. It's normally used for things like Kato switches, for tortoise switches, Pico switches, you know, various things like that. Um, theoretically, it would work with these Z-scale switches, but it has not been tested. So, I, you know, I, I explained what I was going to do, and they said, yeah, go ahead, give it a try. Um, it may or may not work. Uh, through the app, it has consistently been working, and the app connects to the decoder over Bluetooth. But when I send the signal from the DCC command station, it's then sort of doing something a little, uh, doing something a little different, which I don't understand why. Yes, Steve. Steve? Question. Now, from your five hundred eight, from your DK five hundred eighteen. All right. That's not what is putting the DC signal to the track, correct? The part one. Uh, the DK518 is a stationary decoder. Just, it, right. it, okay. just so, like any it, other stationary decoder. Not, so it is not actually sending a DCC signal to the switch. It is sending just DC pulses. DC or AC pulses, one or the other. Uh, okay. DC or AC, so, correct. So if your voltage is too high, you should adjust the voltage after that. The correct. Switches. Yes. Right. Yes. Uh, and, and, and they make step downs from 12 to 10. So. Yes. Uh, I and believe. I believe it's AC, I think. Coming out, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. Maybe no, no, no. Uh, no, it's DC. It's, it's got to be DC. Two wire, two wire. Two so wire, it's DC. Two. Wire. Nice. two. It's DC. So it's DC. So yes, yep. I could put a step down on uh, the so outside of this. The question is though, do I, I need to? Don't know. I don't know. It's it's very hard to know, but so now so I have uh, I have this set of switches working on 101, and they change. Uh, they, uh, let's move this here. Uh, they change exactly as expected. Uh, this switch is on 102, and this switch is sometimes changing as expected. Sometimes it gets stuck, but it, it's it switches. To normal, it doesn't seem to like to switch to diverging. Uh, but then this switch here is working um, as well now. So the only switch not hooked up is this uh, number four switch uh, back here. So we're getting somewhere. And unfortunately, the wire for the number four switch is this short wire right here that you can't even see because it's so short. It, I may have to uh, I may have to extend it just because it's traveling so much further. 
uh, before I before I hook that up. Oh, I could do it like this, I guess. I can make the three wires longer. I can get I just that yeah, two dollars and sixty cents a gallon. What's two sixty a gallon? Gas here in Florida, in Tampa. Oh, I could not begin to even guess what the cost of gas is because I don't have a car. And not having a car, I don't ever get gas. Well, I have a car, but I don't need gas. The electric? Yes. I got a hybrid. I fill up every other month. Yeah, no, you guys. Fully electric. Oh, yeah, yeah. My only fear with a fully electric car would just be if I ever went on a road trip. You know, it's like how it all how depends on the it. infrastructure of chargers. Yeah, and here on the here on this coast, I don't think the infrastructure is uh, quite as good as it is on the out in California. Well, and the cultural differences in in, in Europe, everything's a lot closer to drive to. All right, anything over an hour. Hour, hours away, you can take it a motor for transportation. Typically, right. in the United States, heck, I gotta get in the car and I gotta drive 500 miles to visit my kids. So, yeah, on the road for hi. Where, uh, I, I don't even know where you live. Hi, are you, in, are the you in the U.S. or are you somewhere else? Holland. I'm living in the Netherlands. Netherlands, gotcha. Yep. Yeah, I get, Man, I get a friend in Venlo. Andy Where? says gas Steve? is eight dollars and forty three cents a gallon. Venlo, it's right on. Venlo, on yeah. The German border. Uh, I I know that because yeah, that's uh, that's next to the city where uh, well actually I was born in the village Blerik that is next to Venlo. Okay. And I go Koish over at person in uh, uh, a castle. I can't remember the castle. But it's a big thing. Like twenty thousand visitors to the Koi show there. I think that's in Arsen. Arsen, yeah. Yep. Exactly. You also I don't have think the. I've ever been to the Netherlands. There. Yeah, good, beautiful. Yeah, the castle has gardens. Yeah, yeah, that's in Arsen. It's just above yeah. Fenlo. Yeah. Exactly. Can anyone hear my neighbor practicing the, uh, uh, what's that called, saxophone? Nope. Can you hear me play guitar? Uh, <laughs> if you played it right now, I could. <laughs> I can't. I can't normally hear you playing guitar. <laughs> Okay, so I'm trying to... 320 miles to this shop. Yeah. So you're in lockdown. I mean, why to... is she in the car? Wouldn't she be in lockdown? I've been... To... Oh, that's true. I've been to Amsterdam. But I've never been... I haven't really been other places in Holland. Or... Yeah, the place that... Hi, and I'm talking about it's about two, two and a half hours from Amsterdam, south, southeast. No, it's 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 down. it's one and a half hour drive from Amsterdam. Just an hour and a half. Okay. Yep. Um, I know but I, I don't live there anymore. All those, all those I live a little bit up north. cities. But also still. Uh, uh, Close to the to to the German border. I'm still a little confused as to why it's called the Netherlands or Holland or like why does it have so many different names? 
Well, you had a uh, United Netherlands. That's a seven un a, a nation of, of, of the Netherlands. Uh, that's what it was before. And yeah, in practice, we call it Holland. But it's just the way of saying. Okay. Well, we're the United States. We're called America. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kind of makes Canadians upset because they're technically Americans. So are, so are Mexicans and so are <laughs> a lot of other nations for that matter. Yeah. North Americans at least. And then there's the whole Southern Americans. And Central Americans. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Nisi? Thank you so much for supporting my uh, blowing up stuff fund. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, I'm like sitting here wiring stuff up on a live stream, you know, all these wires and everything talking about blowing stuff up. Probably not the best thing for the YouTube AI to be uh, to be listening to. <clears throat> oh, yeah, you're going to list yeah along with the rest of us who are telling you but <laughs> texas just wishes it was its own country uh yeah how holland is easier to say that's true <laughs> that is definitely true um texas is the only dang it, i thought this was a replay right. i'll leave and come back later well, you can stay. I'm I'm about to, I think, potentially blow up the last thing I'm going to blow up for the day. Uh, so. <laughs> you know, you know, your confidence level has reversed. <laughs> no, no, I, I totally you know, reversed. I, I, it started hours. very confident uh, when you started uh, hooking everything up. <laughs> well, so, so. <laughs> I was very confident that I wasn't going to blow anything up, and I only blew up half of one thing. The turnout still works in one direction. So, <laughs> you know, I wasn't, I wasn't too far off from, uh, from there. Okay, so... You're only, ha you're only half. Right. Yeah, so, uh, this, so this guy here still works. I can kind of see those switching. Um... This guy still throws in one direction, but not the other direction. Uh, this guy here is not throwing at all. There we go. Oh. Apparently, apparently you can't have your finger on the little lever that switches because then it yeah. won't. Uh, that, then it won't switch. That, that, yeah, that's problematic. Yeah, and now we're gonna try this guy back here. Let's uh, let's. Uh, oh, that was too much. It's this this switch back here. There we yep. go. Let's turn that straight. So, I'm getting a new switch for uh, I'm getting a new switch for here, which should work. Uh, this switch only throws in one direction, but I think I'll pull it out and maybe open it up and see if I can uh, get it to switch in both directions. Maybe or maybe I'll just buy a new switch. Who knows. Who knows what's going to happen? Anything's possible. I would go out there. for a new switch. Probably. At the end of the day, though, like I said, it's like I do not need to remote control the switches on the Z scale layout. I'm doing it because it's fun. <laughs> but there's no reason for it. It's 100% well, not needed. Well, which is that switch in the. Uh, on the top of the picture, in the rear. This one up here. That one uh, automatic. Yeah, and that one autom automatic um, keeps you from having to reach over and so forth. So. Yeah, and I mean, you know, ha having them automatic is is fun, right? I mean, that's uh, to me, it's just it's just another way to sort of enhance the operations of it. But uh, Lynn, Lynn says, I vote for a new switch. Um, have you reversed the leads on the switch that switches in one direction? I have not. Ooh, good point. So we can try that. 
Here's the question, though. Which leads should I switch? So I could switch the leads. Um, I could switch the leads that go into this little piece here. Or I could switch the leads um, here at the... Doesn't matter. They're the same. All I do is reverse in polarity. Um... Yeah, I guess they would ultimately have the same effect, wouldn't that? All right, let's try it. I'm all about trying things, so. I mean, what are you going to do? Put it up? It's already bad, so. What I was going to do was wrap this up and go get lunch. That's what I was going to do. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do that, too. Your mic has been cutting in and out, just so you know, uh, Steve. Okay. I don't know why. You were just Chuck not your usual crisp, clear self. I think it was more of a connection issue. I was probably fine until I took that phone call. And I'm back. I don't. That's another thing I Linda's hate about Streamyard is Streamyard crashes on you, and and there's nothing you can do about it. Okay, so uh, yeah, it doesn't doesn't matter. Um, it's just like saying solder. Lynn says if he sees flames, he'll kick in twenty. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, I don't. I don't think we're gonna see flames. Um, unfortunately, I don't think I'm getting twenty. But. Uh, <laughs> What was I going to say? I don't know. So does does everybody remember which direction this switch did switch it? Oh, I know what I was going to say. Uh, Roy, Roy Hardwick uh, just uh, texted me saying that he can't type the word damn, D-A-M-N, into the chat that it automatically like deletes his message, which um, which is kind of funny. I've got a list of like banned words. And I think it's funny. I guess Dan is is in the list of banned words, so he can't type it. <laughs> Just put dots in between. Uh, he said he tried. Uh, he tried doing um, like spaces, and it didn't work. He said, but I don't know. Uh, so let's see. One hundred two. So, of course, now it's switching in both directions. Oh, no, there it goes. Now it stopped. Now it stopped switching altogether. I do just wonder, like, sometimes... I kind of feel like sometimes they're just not the most robust switches in the world. Well... Well, it's not the most robust scale in the world. <laughs> I know. All right, so it's still throwing. Or it's still throwing. Uh, uh, open, open, open is. It's still throwing along the main line. It's not throwing on the turn. So it's so straight, it's still. Uh, it's still not switching in the right. Still not switching both ways. It's still switching the one way. It's um, so it's obviously on whatever the uh, the contact is for throwing it. You know this this one way. So it's it flips this. It yeah. flips that. Yeah. So, but so that was a good test. Good. I I like that. Uh, I like that uh, test. Oh, oh, Nisi says light a candle. <laughs> 
explain you got M equals twenty dollars from Lynn. I don't have a candle, but I have a lighter. Does that count for anything? Flame. Pretty close. I don't think, think that's in the spirit of what Lynn had in mind. I know, I know. <laughs> um yeah, dots don't work. Uh, voodoo will not help me. Well, I don't know about anybody else, but I feel like I've learned a lot. I've learned that the throttle still doesn't work the way I would like it to with Z-scale switches. Now, it might be... Um, <laughs> Lynn... Lynn, I was just joking. It's all good, Lynn. It's all good. It's all good. Uh, so Roy is saying that uh, you can use a four for the A, and that uh, that that's how you can get around the block words. Is use numbers for some of the vowels. That is very true. Uh, what what did Nisi? Oh yeah, Nisi with the with the flame suggestion. Um, so now you've seen flames on my channel too. I mean, whole, you know, how, uh, how awesome is that? Uh, it's getting better from flame, uh, from smoke to flames. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> you learn the firmware update and help. <laughs> uh, so I did actually, he's not here today, but, uh, split rock three, two, three was, uh, wanted me to send him. Uh, the switch because he wants to see if he can make Z scale to he wants to try hand building Z scale turnout and I was like I'll send you some stuff like that <laughs> like if you want to try that I'll send you whatever um, so I if I wait long enough maybe a couple years or so um, he may <laughs> actually just be able to he just may be able to build build me these uh, switches and replace them that way but it's it's kind of cool. I mean, for Z. Fast Tracks makes jigs for Z, and that new company as mm -hmm. well makes uh, makes uh, jigs. Uh, wow. I learned Fast Tracks does not like calling their jigs jigs. Fast Tracks calls their jigs oh, yeah. fixtures, even though they are okay. jigs. So definition. apparently the owner of Fast Tracks wants you to call their jigs fixtures. So, uh, what is the name of that other? I can't remember. What is the name of the other one? Not Fast Tracks, but the other company. I have no idea. Um, it's something with tracks. T R A X. It's like Blue Ridge, maybe Blue Ridge tracks. Yep, that's it. All right, Blue, this is the... Blue Ridge. This is going to hit the jackpot. The one. Uh, I'm excited. My daughter just said she has a metric ton of trains for me. A metric ton. Uh, and you're, are you N scale? That's true. or HO? Or both? I think you're both, you said. So does anyone want to work out metric how many trains, tunnel. how many boxcars would be a metric ton of trains? 2,000 kilograms. Yeah, but how many boxcars would that be in, let's say, HO scale to make the calculation a little easier? Or is it two, two counts? Uh, Andy, my understanding is that it's the it's the fast tracks guy that doesn't doesn't like that. Um, yeah, Nick, we're still here. I thought you were going to join us. What a, a little power outage stopped you from getting online? I mean, what do you need power for? Uh, okay, here we go. I see Lee's Ro and Robert. I, have, I haven't heard him say one word. I know, not a single word. Lee hasn't said a single thing since he's been on yet. Uh, so Flying Crow's throwing out some numbers. So let's see. 4.5 ounces per car. 
Um, Andy Singh, it's 1,000 kilograms in it. So how many 4.5 ounce cars can we get in a metric ton? And I want to, I do, I want to see this metric ton of cars. And I'm hoping that uh, Robert's going to finish doing the math on that and tell us just how many box cars that is, because that's that's going to be that's awesome. An aerial ton, Ann. Um, uh, over here, a ton is two thousand pounds, not twenty two hundred. Right. Well, he's saying a a metric ton is two thousand two hundred pounds because that's one thousand kilograms. Oh, here we go. Wait, we got the accountant. The accountant's checking in. So Nisi is about to get 7,822 7, pieces of rolling stock from her daughter. Well, that's if it's all rolling stock. What if there's engine? All right, well, <laughs> how much is a locomotive? And we can work out on the high side, it's 7,822. If they're all locomotives... Which are what two pounds a piece? So that would be a thousand uh, locomotives, right? So, so Nisi is getting. Um, Lynn, <laughs> thank you so much. I I appreciate that. <laughs> Even though I did cheat a little bit, I did cheat a little bit. Tyler saying I just got out of math. I don't need to do any more today. Uh, Andy says, wish I had a daughter like that. Mine steals my car. Okay, so Boulder Creek Yard, 7,822 cars, and they're all the same car and the same road number. Uh, 10,000 is 1.28 metric tons. Oh, 10,000 boxcars would be. Um, yeah, so DB Tech, yeah, we're talking uh, metric ton, not um SAE ton. So an SAE ton would be two thousand pounds. A metric ton's two thousand two hundred, which would be the the difference in the in the math there. Um so Lynn's thrown out what if Nisi is getting steam brass locomotives from her daughter? A metric ton of steam brass. Is, <laughs> is brass what would I, I a lot. Even, I, well but it's but it would be less than let's say if she got it'd probably be like a thousand SD70 aces so in steam locomotives you're probably figuring it's you know 750 maybe so Nisi's getting 750 brass steam locomotives, or she's getting 1,000 regular locomotives, or she's maybe getting 7,000 boxcars. I don't know if anyone's she's noticed, Nisi has gotten really quiet since she's threw out the, uh, the number of uh, cars she's actually going to be getting. Manny! Glad you could catch a. Glad you can catch hey, a stream. Man. Haven't seen you in a little while. Good to see you back. Um, yeah, steam locomotives are usually heavier. Yeah, so we're saying there would be less steam locomotives than diesel locomotives in a metric ton. Oh well, here we go. What if they were all some, you know, nineteen seventies Tyco plastic cars? I think it could be 20,000. Yeah. I, I don't know about anybody else, but I'm starting to get really excited for Nisi's next video. <laughs> She's going to have a room full. Floor to ceiling. Uh, so Nick's Crossings just got his new train in after it took a little bit of a shipping right. adventure around the world. Okay, not really around the world. It just went to his parents' house about 40 minutes away. But, you know, to me, that's around the world. Or at least it probably felt that way. Um, Nisi is saying that her daughter has a car 
that is big enough to put a metric ton of trains inside of. Who wants to work out how big Nisi's daughter's car is to fit 7,000 HO scale boxcars? That's a big car. <laughs> John? Uh, John? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I, th I think... Th the accountant's probably actually doing accountant stuff and not uh, um, uh, not actually uh, paying attention to our, uh, yeah. Uh, Andy is asking, what is Nisi's link to her channel? Um, let's see if I can find it really quickly. I think John may actually be working. John probably should actually be working. Is my mic uh, working now? Holy cow. Uh -oh. Lee! Please, my mic yeah, working now. I had, I had issues with my mic. I didn't know. I've been sitting here in the stream and I've just got into my settings on the stream. God. Wait. He's Lee, just been are, talking away. We haven't, we haven't heard a word. You, you've seriously been talking this whole time, not realizing that we haven't mm -hmm. been hearing you. Yes, I think I thought I, I, you could hear me. <laughs> that is too funny. <laughs> it, it is, is too I, too funny. I, I I know what it was. I thought I it was strange. I was I looked, messing around. I was I messing around looked. with the mic earlier. Cause I, pl I plugged in a lapel mic on it, trying to do some testing. So I unplugged that and didn't go back to the settings, did I? <laughs> Well, Lee, I got to tell you, man, you with your mic off is the best sounding you've ever been on my stream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't have to mute myself. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I took, you know, if, if Steve could learn that technique that you used on this stream, I, I mean, things would just, things would skyrocket. <laughs> yeah, they would, wouldn't they? Th things would just would just go through the roof. It, it would be amazing. Um, uh, Nick from Nick's Crossing saying you are practicing mm -hmm. being a mime. <laughs> oh, thanks, oh. Nick. <laughs> and uh, Ben Got you Junction Carl is saying that I should mute you now that you figured out how to get your mic working. <laughs> uh. Yeah, so for anybody wondering, uh, John from School River Valley beat me by about five seconds posting the link to Nisi's channel. <laughs> Steve87PSAP <laughs> says, you've been muted the entire time, Lee? Wow, you do belong on Heath's stream. Just to be clear, I did not have Lee muted. No, Lee, I thought Lee was just not talking because he was doing stuff. And he was just hanging out with us. I checked a couple times was... to make sure I wasn't didn't have him muted. So I went into I the settings was... on on the mic and I altered the settings, and now I've I've got him working. That's only so me. If that I wouldn't have that. said anything, you wouldn't have known. Yeah, I wouldn't have done that. Lee, if I wouldn't have said anything, you. You wouldn't have known, okay. That's yeah, that, one, right? <laughs> that is even funnier. So it, it's now one forty eight, so it's about an hour almost an hour, well, forty nine minutes past when I was gonna end this stream. But since I haven't ended the stream and now Lee has his microphone working, uh Lee, why don't you uh before we head out of here, why don't you tell everybody what, what you've got going on in your channel and what you're up to? Well, I've got videos. I've got videos. Okay, and we just got rid of Lee because uh, he's talking too much. And no, <laughs> Lee, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. Go ahead. Tell, tell yeah, us I've got vid I've got a video coming out tomorrow. Then I've got me modeling uh, stream at oh, twelve noon. Is my view gone again? No, 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 no it's Steve's okay. just giving you a hard time. We can hear you. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, Steve. Yeah, no, I've got my modeling what, uh, thing I do on a Sunday, 12 noon, on uh, GMT, uh, 
Eastern Standard Time. And I've got a couple of new people up on the panel for that one. You'll have to, if you're about, you want to come over and see it. I've got a new person, two new, a new person coming up on the panel. Yeah, so there's now two modeling shows actually on Sunday. Um, Chris from Go Via Go Home is on from about 10 to noon. And then yeah, Lee and then... is on uh, starting at noon. Yeah. Yeah. I know, because Chris is usually still Eastern. on when I go on. Oh, yeah? Okay. Yeah. Can I yeah. usually watch Chris for a bit? I'll be in Chris's stream while I'm still oh, okay. setting my... And then I go over to my own and check. But it, 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 there's enough YouTube for everyone. So, uh, Nisi, uh, just so that you know, your daughter's car has an interior square footage of 1,312 square feet. What's the size of my house? I was going to say, it's bigger than my apartment. Yeah. So, yeah. Container Man, I wonder if Container Man can tell us what size container would you need... For 1,312 square feet. Nothing while we're waiting, feet, while we're waiting, Steve, what do you got going on? What's your uh, What's your next tip of the week? <laughs> now, now here's uh, the question. It will be. Here's the question. You know that I keep asking you what your next tip of the week is. So the question is. Did you think to look it up before you came on the stream today just so you can answer the question? I did. I okay, did. Good. It will be good. on my parsing backdrop. And the part I got wrong uh, <laughs> in putting it together. And it'll be Monday. So, uh, sorry. So, which backdrop is it? The is it the Knicks from PGH Train Fanatics backdrop, or is it the Train Junkies uh, backdrop? No, no, no. Train Junkies back. Gotcha. Train Junkies backdrop. From the corn. My corn. Corn. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh, so Steve, thought... Steve's head yeah. now, as well as the rest of us. So, uh, yeah, I want to see that PGH Train Fanatic uh, thing all lit up. That's what I want to see. Yes. Hold up. Hang on. Do, 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 do. Can you see it back there? Yes, no. Maybe so. But I don't know what we're looking at. Where it's the. Oh, you did set it up. I didn't oh, realize damn. you got it installed. Yeah. There you go. Oh, that's awesome. Looks well, lot, Dave. Yeah. You won't see it unless yeah, it's I like cab ride video. But. The LEDs he puts in them and stuff, I think, make it, you know, background flats. I love lighting on my outs. And I think the whole background flat thing and adding yeah. the LEDs, I, I just think it's it's great, you know. It really adds something to it, so. Those, those, uh, those from uh, Nick as well. Oh, really? Oh, I didn't oh. know that. This is my Nick's second order from Nick, so... Oh, cool. Nick's got a good layout, though. I do like Nick's layout. I think it's so funny. I, I mean, I, I realize I probably had something to do with it, but I think it's pretty funny that we've gone down the rabbit hole with Nisi and her metric ton of uh, 7,000 boxcars, 1,000 diesel locomotives, 750 steam locomotives, and her daughter's car that is 1,312 square feet. So, hi. Thanks, everybody. What are, what, uh, what are you well, got going on? What I'm on? Looking, uh, working on is this board, which is, uh, um, yeah, which is now shown. Um, it's uh, uh, for the turnouts to uh, switch uh, uh, the turnouts on, on my uh, track. Um, I have a, a DCC++ control station, but that is uh, not hooked up yet. Uh, so I'm using JMRI um, uh, to control the uh, CMRI nodes. Uh, the, mm. On the left-hand side, you see the centers. 
those will be uh, replaced with hall sensors and magnetics under the train uh, to detect the train where they are so that I can have a block detection uh, on it because my layout is analog, so just DC. And uh, so I'm gonna switch to another uh, layout. So let me see if that works. Transition. So this. So this is an overview of what I and have you built so far. He so just works. Yeah. <laughs> so on on the right and the top side, that is the village uh, which I built uh, in several sections, and I'm gonna make some videos around the city. And you see that there is also a uh, uh, on the left hand side. Uh, at the top there is a windmill, which uh, um, I'm going to make it work so that it turns. And then oh, awesome. uh, also the switches, they will be controlled by the CMRI uh, nodes uh, uh, on it. So that is my uh, plan to uh, do for the coming, uh, yeah, for the coming months. A guy uh, in the yeah, Netherlands no. with a windmill on his layout. Who would have thought? <laughs> that is a nice layout, that. <laughs> I'm already... Manny, thank you so much for the sticker, uh, super sticker, much, much appreciated. And uh, I do just have to say, now that Thomas from Split Rock is here, we definitely have to uh, have to wind up <laughs> the stream. Uh, getting a little crowded around here. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. Spark went live. Build a ceiling. Oh, is he? Well, there you go. So uh, we can... We can all wrap this up, head over and uh, go visit Sparky and Mass. Uh, if people do on their way out, though, want to drop in the chat what they're up to on their own channels, uh, you know, what's going on, what people should look for on their on your channel, uh, where you're at on the subscribers, if people are close. Uh, if, oh, contests coming up. Vinny is doing his 4,000 subscriber contest tonight at 8 o'clock on... Uh, BNSF6951 on Vinny's channel. Uh, Anthony Dodge is going to go uh, live at 3.30 today, I believe. Uh, Sparky107107 is live right now building his Helix. Uh, Tim's, Trains. Tim's Trains is also live right now doing uh, some work in his shed. Uh, so lots of stuff out there. Uh, to look at and yeah thomas you know we we started at 11 30 it's now two so so you're uh you're late late to the game uh tim part three of the train on the truck is going up today uh take care we'll be doing a brunch this weekend expect new videos soon including that one you want yes i've been trying to uh oh, roy no. is gonna run his Solar Series uh, train. So, uh, that's going to be awesome. Oh. Thomas was hanging out with the grandkids instead of hanging out with us. Uh, you know, I... I don't know. Priorities. Priorities, priorities. Container Man, see you later. Uh, Drew Dude. My channel is dormant. Just using it to hang out. Yeah, man, that's, you know... That's what it's all about sometimes. It's just... Just hanging out. Well, hi, Steve and Lee. Thank you all so much for visiting. No much problem. appreciated. Yep, you're welcome. Yes. I will. I will see everybody again really soon. And uh, everybody have a fantastic rest of their Friday. And I will uh, see everybody around. I'm going over to. I'm going over to Sparky's uh -huh. now. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Okay. Bye.